Hello guys, we're going to be going over the Friday NBA preseason slate, October 8th. So we got seven games here, and they're going to be spread out just like how they were before. So there's going to be 30 minute gaps um, in between a lot of these games. Then we got 7 p.m. alone, uh, Lakers and Warriors. So starting off, Indy, Cleveland. Um, I think the Indy side is very intri intriguing, actually, because they do have Rick Carlisle as their new coach. And if you take a look, which I'm sure many people are just going to do this, which is going to be um, looking at Pacers first game, which no star played over 20 minutes and they basically just spread everything out and nobody really did that great. But here's what Rick Carlisle did when he was on the Mavericks. Um, this was last season. So this is the second game. Now, keep in mind, they had three preseason games for the Mavericks last year. This year, the Pacers have four. So that's there's an additional game this year that maybe... The, um, this rotation doesn't happen but just looking at this this is why i have some interest in the pacers so the mavericks played the richardson Doncic 29 minutes each and then all the starters the other three still got big minutes and dwight powell is the one that he usually doesn't play a lot of minutes because i believe he was coming off of like an injury um last or two two seasons ago like a really major injury so you're looking at you the if the main starters they get close to 30 minutes if that's what Recall is going to do for the Pacers situation this year, you're going to be looking at probably the best plays on the slate here. And hopefully there is some confirmation. But if not, I'm still going to take a chance just because we have that type of data from Rick Carlisle already, what he could possibly do. And this is the first game, um, so we're probably going to get news. But if we don't, I'll still take some shots unless they, you know, they say like, no, this is not what they're going to do. They're going to cap them at like 22 minutes or something then please do not play, like, I'm not saying absolutely fade everyone, but they're just not going to be great plays. So, Indy, like, this is why I'm talking about this, because the water's at 8,500. If you can get 30 minutes, he can legit just get 40-plus. That's the kind of upside that this guy has. And then with Brogdon, 5,900, he's just way too good of a player to be priced at this price, especially against the Cavs, which it's still preseason. But the Cavs have one of the worst guard defender combos in the league with Sexton and Garland. Nothing against them, but they're just not good defenders. And then even their big men, like Moby's a rookie. Jared Allen gets some blocks, but he's not an actual good defender. Like we like target him in DFS all the time when uh, there's an opposing center. So I love Brogdon. Sabonis is going to be good then. And then Miles Turner at 5,200. He looks like just a really underpiece price here. And then Chris Duarte, 5,600. But I would rather stick with the starters. Um, but Duarte does look pretty intriguing, if, you know, if you're playing season long or whatever. But yeah, I don't think on a seven game state, I really need to go there. Now, the Cleveland side, this is also very interesting because on a back to back last game, they played somehow a 10 man rotation and they ran Garland for nearly 36 minutes. I don't know why they did this. You know, this is just not what coaches usually do. And especially when the coach is talking about how they're going to use 20 guys. In the first game and then now it's a back-to-back -back and they shorten it when they didn't actually use 20 guys i you know it, it is anyone's guess and i wish i could tell you what to do here but i would say that they don't do this again but i mean if they're willing to do it on a back-to-back -back, i wouldn't be surprised if they do it again but i think that's going to make them really chalky and hopefully they say something because i do not want to play chalk of any of these guys because these guys just don't have the same talent levels of you know the other players on the slate so if they're gonna play massive minutes for sure i'm gonna want garland and sexton um i think people might go to coro because he's cheap at 4800 but i don't think he's gonna be needed because there's other better value plays on the slate and also um you're playing with mobley and jared allen your rebound is gonna be reduced and you also don't have the ball with both guards sexton and garland healthy so we're gonna have to wait if they do you know say they're gonna still run a similar rotation or not because if they don't say anything i'm probably just gonna try to fade and hope that they don't do the same thing now milwaukee and brooklyn at 4 30 so i would think drew doubtful he's gonna miss too so you're probably looking at another day another game of just running a bunch of these backups um they are priced up though like jordan mora uh, thanasis Thana and kumpo they're not 4 and 4,100 anymore, so they're not as great. This Mamu guy, sorry, I have no idea how to say his name, but 5,900, Brook Lopez, he actually got good minutes. Same with Jeff Teague, which is weird because they're old, or George Hill, rather. So 
I don't know. Maybe they're – I don't see why they would play them big minutes, but if they do, then, I mean, that's just gonna, not going to be good. Um, but I would say that Nora still could be in play at 1600 if everyone's out, still going to get the start, going to play heavy minutes. Then that's as well. But they're not as great plays as before. Um, and then maybe you can take a look at, like, a guy like Tremont Waters or something. But, yeah, I'm not too sure because the Bucks, their first game again, that was against the Grizzlies with the um, whole fire alarm picnic and – um, like they didn't play the fourth quarter or whatever. So the minutes are, again, if you look at the box score, they're not accurate. Now, Brooklyn, so it looks like they're going to just rest their stars again. Kyrie cannot play. And the last preseason games, and that was against the Lakers, they gave some dudes big minutes. Like um, Cameron Thomas definitely stood out. He's their first round pick, so he's just a, he's a shot maker. So this, um, I think he's pretty cheap. Yeah, 4,800, perfectly fine. He looks like to be a good value, but probably a bit um, shooting dependent. Now, Duke Jr., 5,200, he got the most minutes here, so 31. Um, not sure about the rebounding there with 7, because when you're not a center, those can definitely fluctuate. So I would say someone's probably going to do good here, just because if all three of these guys are out, then you're looking at a whole team of under you know, near 5k and under players. So someone probably has to absolutely just go off. Now, New Orleans. So I would think Ingram and Graham both missed just because it's preseason and they're questionable. Um, and Kill Alexander Walker is going to be chalky again. He's just a very good fantasy player. People already know about him. And I think there's a little bit of concern because of the matchup. The Bulls likely to play their starters heavy again. So that's just going to mean a harder matchup for um, the Pelican guys. Joe Val is fine as well, so 100, because he's just really good. You know, hopefully he doesn't get injected again. Now, Trey Murphy. So I said that I didn't want to play him last time, and I know that he did pretty good. Uh, he played, again, a big minutes 29, but still, you see that 20 points. He was making a lot of shots again, and he is a shooter. So I'm not going to say I'm surprised by that, because I'm not, but... Yeah, you're looking at another opportunity for Trey Murphy to be chalk. And when someone is shot dependent, I would just rather rather or fade them completely or be under on that player. So now he's also not that cheap anymore. Again, the Bulls are going to probably play their stars a lot more, meaning better defense. So I don't think I want to play any of Murphy this game, even if Ingram and Graham are confirmed out. I would just rather spend that money elsewhere. And I think if Graham is out, maybe you can look at Kyra Lewis, 4,800. Also can um, operate as just kind of like a leverage play if you're not playing NAW. Now, the Chicago side. So hopefully they say that they're going to play these guys again a lot of minutes. Uh, they played a lot even through the end of third. So these guys this time, great matchup. And they're all actually cheaper. So if... They're going to play 25 minutes-ish. They're going to look really good. This is what they did against the Cavs. Now, it's the Cavs, but also we're playing the Pelicans, so not that big of an upgrade. And they got a lot of steals and blocks this game, so it definitely helped their fantasy stats. But, I mean, you just look at the kind of upside that these guys all have, like the four stars other than Javante, who had a really good game. But these guys all just can really go off, and now they're cheaper their minutes look like to be maybe on the safer side, safest even on the whole slate. So I think they look really good. Uh, but yeah, I would rather just stick to the starters here. Now onto the Heat. So they're on a back-to-back. -back. Um, I'm currently following the game right now, uh, the night before. So I think that they're going to rest probably some players, like uh, the main guys of Kyle Lowry, uh, out of bio, Jimmy Butler, Bravo, just because they don't need to play them. and I'm thinking that that's going to make the younger guys. So I think maybe Tyler Hero could play Max Spruce. Um, even some of these guys that are out, like Gabe Vincent. Um, I don't know if he's actually out due to that injury or if they're just trying to rest him. So if he's actually going to play this game, then I would have a lot of interest just because, again, you're looking at an entire team that looks pretty cheap and there's going to be a lot of minutes available. So I think he looks like a good value if the guys are out. Now, yeah, this game... Um, Omar Yurt 7 hasn't entered. I'm thinking he's, he's going to play later when Deadman comes out, but either way, if Bam is going to rest this game, Deadman and Yurt 7 look really good. Now, there could be a potential for a 3 or even 4-man if they go with Markeith at small ball, but um, 
I think year seven, he was a really good summer league player um, too. I'm just trying to make sure if year seven comes into the game here or not. That he's at the mid map 4k and center doesn't look like to be too loaded right now. So I think he could definitely be a good late swap. Make sure you know you always have your center or not center but util spots um, available for late swapping. Now on to the Spurs. Greg Popovich said that they're going to try to rest one of their main guys every game. They'll take turns. So um, Dejounte Murray was the guy last game. I would think maybe Derek White's going to have his turn now. So if that is the case, Dejounte Murray is going to look really good to me. And at 6K, it's going to just be one of the better plays. Now, if you look at the Spurs last game, they ran the rotation a little bit tighter. And um, it's nice, especially when it's pop. Kelvin Johnson could not shoot the ball. And he was able to get 27 minutes. He's a young guy, similar to a lot of these Spurs, really. They're just trying to, you know, go young and they have some potential here. So I would say that because they are priced pretty friendly, that I would definitely have some interest in a few of these guys. But again, we're going to have to wait on and see who is actually active. Now, the Clippers, I don't have much to say because this is the Clippers again. And who knows? They rule guys out. They say he's playing and then they rule him out later. Like, I don't know. Um, for all we know, you know, Morris is going to play tomorrow and George is out or something. So I have no idea. We're going to have to just monitor the situation. Really don't want to talk about them right now because it's the Clippers. The Mavericks kind of similar because we don't know if uh, Jason Kidd is going to let Luka and Porzingis play more than just the first half. If they do, I will have interest in Luka. Not so much in Porzingis, but I guess you should probably consider him because it is the preseason so raw points matter. You should be able to fit anyone that you want. And power forward is generally a pretty weak spot. So something to definitely monitor for the Mavericks. Now, Minnesota, they didn't really play their starters a whole lot. Like um, only Anthony Edwards got over 19. I would say that uh, we have to wait, or we have to monitor what the coaches say uh, before the game, and we're just not going to know. So again, another big late 12 opportunity, but they have a lot of good fantasy players. Like, they have so many guys that can just go off, and they have upside with, like, the rebounding with Towns, and they all shoot threes, they point bonus on DK, assists with D'Lo, Edwards can do it, Beasley's just a pretty much shot-dependent guy, but he is cheap, so he can fill up in preseason. So I think there are a few guys that we could target depending on um, if they do exceed 20 minutes. Now, Denver, we don't know if Jokic is going to play. FPJ still, um, not really sure if he's going to be in here. So, again, just another team that we're going to have to watch. Now, Bones Highland, he is priced up now, but his minutes do look pretty good. So, I would say not really much core play now, but I wouldn't be surprised if you wanted to play him and he does well. PJ Dozier, 5,200. I prefer him because he looks like to be a big part of the rotation, and he's, I think, uh, has a yeah has a decent chance of having like a breakout here, just especially with some of the injuries that they're going to be dealing with. Now, on to the last game. So the Lakers, they played one preseason game so far, and or I think it might have been, yeah, it was two. Yeah, Brooklyn and then the Sun. So this is going to be a third one. And their rotation was pretty, like, I mean, it's interesting for preseason. Like, if we can get AD playing again by himself, I'll take that if he gets 25 minutes. I'm going to roster him. Now, probably not going to know, again, is this the last game, but um, I would try to prioritize the young guys here, just with, like with any team, like THT, Kendrick Nunn, Malik Monk, Austin Reeves, probably not so much, because I think THT, just we've seen him in the past, he's done it against um, NBA level competition too, so I think they do look pretty interesting, just again, because they're really affordable, so the Lakers are also a value team, could go with an 80, 700 is really cheap, actually, for um, if we do get like 25 minutes of him. Now, the Warriors side, Curry hasn't rested yet. Maybe he actually does play all games, but I don't think that's going to happen. So we're going to have to watch if he actually does play this game. But if he's out, Jordan Poole should be playing, get, getting going to get all the usage. But um, I would say that he's looked really good, so he's going to be kind of chalky. And he's never a guy that I'm like, I have to play. Now, some of the younger guys, like, we just have to watch. Like, if... Curry's going to rest or whatever. Yeah, certainly it could definitely open up a lot of minutes and usage for some of these guys, but they do have a lot. So I'm trying to get my value elsewhere just in the beginning so I can lock it in. So I think favorite play right now, I'm actually going to put Brogdon just because I think it's going to be really good tournament play. And that's what these videos are for. It's for GPP. So hopefully Brogdon, um, Rick Carlisle does use like that second game rotation that he used when he was with the Mavs. 
And then I would say Cavs can certainly play them, um, but I think you or Horns is going to be a little bit elevated. Now, um, oh, the New Orleans side. So, of course, we have to play NAW, most likely. No surprises. Now, the Bulls, I'm going to take the Rosen just because he wasn't, like, the best guy out of these guys. And also, like, he's cheaper than some of these dudes who I don't think, like, Lonzo should be more expensive than him. And then I would say DeJounte Murray, but again, this is uh, contingent on if Derek White does end up resting. And then let me try to find maybe a center play. Um, oh, of course, the Heat guy. Omar Yurt 7. If he is in, he's he actually just checked in the game. Uh, third quarter, 1 minute 55. So, yeah, I would think he... Because he's a young guy, he could play again tomorrow, and he's not going to play in many minutes tonight. So this is his first game uh, action, so I think your 7 could be a play. But again, a lot of these plays that I have recommended are contingent on a lot of things. So please make sure that you do stay up to date with the news. Roto, uh, Rotowire is the website that I use for a lot of us, but follow um, just all the beat reporters on Twitter. I'll also retweet things, quote, tweet them. So make sure that um, you guys are just staying up to date with it, and I'll make sure to try to just update you inform you guys on my twitter wlin018 and it will be in the description of the video below so if you guys have any questions also just leave a comment uh for this video you can also dm me at me on twitter so again as always thank you guys for watching so much really appreciate it all the support so far it's been great for the preseason i'll hopefully try to put up an nfl video for tomorrow and i'll let you guys know when that is up on my twitter so again thank you guys and i'll see you in the next video bye